Right. Mystery Mondays. 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 It is Mystery Mondays with yours truly, Obadiah Penny Whistle. And the man with the golden nugget. Nugget. The man with the golden nugget. <laughs> Young <laughs> Bullwinkle. Nuggets, sorry. Hello. Nuggets, plural. Hello. Young Bullwinkle. And of course, Mr. Drusif Armstrong. Mr. Bubbly himself. Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles. Michael Bublé, stand aside. <laughs> Drusef Bublé is How in the nice house. How nice is that sound? Oh, it's a very satisfying mm. sound, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's really nice, man. Really nice. Very soothing. Yeah. Soothing Beautiful, on the soul. Man. So this is the first in a new series that we're going to bring to you every single Monday. That's and it's right. called, if you hadn't already figured it out, Mystery, Mystery Mondays. Mondays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, every Monday we're going to bring you just a new... Different mystery, a crazy mm -hmm. mystery. We've obviously talked about lots of mysteries in the past, actually on Pandora's box, but we're going to separate it into a different segment so that there's more content. That's right. For your oral, that's A U R A L, mm. not O R A L, you dirty monkeys. Oral and visual pleasure. Mm. So, blow your mind. Young Bullwinkle's got a mystery for us today. Right. We don't even know what it is. So, mm. we're on the edge of our seats. I hope you guys are too. So, take it away, Bullwinkle. So, have either of you heard of the story of the Somerton man. Yes, I have. So I thought oh. you might have. Yes, I, I have. No, I haven't. I no, this is very right. similar well, to the Istal woman, isn't it? It is very, man. this is exactly why I thought you'd Somerton is near similar. us. No, 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 this no, is in Adelaide. Um, ah, Somerton, Adelaide. Mm. Is this Australia? Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very similar to the Isdal woman, which um, we did a little segment on, on our Spotify special mm. that was supposed to go on YouTube, but didn't end up going on YouTube. Bloody technology. Um, but I thought you might have heard this one. So we'll get straight into it. On the evening of November 30th, 1948, a number of people... Thank you. Thank you for the sound effects. A number of people noticed a man propped up against the concrete seawall on Somerton Beach in Adelaide. His legs were outstretched and his feet were serenely crossed. He struck many as odd. For one, he wore a full suit and polished shoes. Bizarre beach attire for a warm evening, wouldn't you agree? Certainly, mm. sir, certainly. Uh, one couple remembers him raising his arm as if drunkenly trying to light a cigarette. Another, ah! exactly, another <laughs> recalls seeing mosquitoes buzzing around his face and thinking that he was too drunk to wave them away. Taste, taste oh no, well... well <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that he was too drunk to wave to away, so right, right, I'm right. just doing an impression of a man that's just oblivious. Right, yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, they each believed that the man had had too much to drink, but in fact, he was dying. Oh. Uh, a pair of amateur jockeys on horseback came across the body the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, what? that just seems like a such pair of amateur a jockeys on horseback. A funny random fact. <laughs> On horseback. Do you want to go for a, do a horse running? Well, we are amateurs, but I suppose the horses are here, so why not go for a frolic on the sands? <laughs> exactly. Is that, a, is that a dying man? They quickly ride towards him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Sorry, continue. They alerted the police. Uh, an initial inspection of the Somerton man, as he, became, as he was come to be known, uh, revealed no obvious cause of death. The clean-shaven man had not been stabbed, shot, or it seemed injured at mm. all. Dun, dun. He had on boxer shorts and a men's singlet, a white shirt and a thin red tie. He wore a light brown. He wore light brown trousers and a brown sweater, and a brown double-crested coat. He's a very mm. brown man. Yeah, it's very, man. Brown. very brown. Well, it's got, I think it was common sort of colours in those mm. days. Like brown suits were quite mm, in. I can tweedy, imagine tweedy brown. Mm. Mm. Uh, his shoes were polished. One of his usual. Uh, pants pockets was repaired. Oh no, sorry. One of his pants pockets was prepared or repaired with an unusual type of orange thread. That's trouser pocket in Ingram. Mm. Mm. Uh, in his pockets, investigators found a railway ticket to Henley Beach, a bus ticket to North Glen Glenelg, and an American metal comb, uh, a packet of juicy fruit chewing gum, a packet of Army Club cigarettes, 
uh, containing a different brand of cigarettes, a handkerchief, and a packet of Bryant and May matches. So nothing too like out of the ordinary. No, no. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Do you know what? So just a little side note. Sorry, mm. before we go on. I've got a packet of Bryant and May matches at home. Mm. The only thing I thought was quite cool about that is it's quite cool to think that Bryant and May, I can still, to this day in England, buy the same match mm. brand that this guy had on him in Adelaide, yeah, Australia, yeah, yeah. back in the day. Mm. Maybe you're linked to the Summer Man. Maybe, mm. I, may, maybe I'm his grandson. <laughs> Who knows? So... <laughs> The man had athletic legs and seemed to be in his 40s or 50s. Mm. His forearms were tanned. His toes were oddly mangled as if they had been shoved into tight shoes, mm. suggesting perhaps that he may have been a dancer. Mm. I heard that, that he might have been a ballet dancer. Yeah. And that would also explain why apparently he had really well-developed calves. Mm. And obviously, if you think about it, when you're a ballet dancer, you're essentially on your tiptoes the whole time. And that's mm. that's what tenses your calf muscles. Mm. Exactly. If you want to build up your calf muscles, yeah, you're often yeah, told yeah. to do like calf raises. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it would, toes. it would explain mm. the mangled mm. toes the big calves mm. ballet dancer Summerton man so strangely the tags and labels of the Summerton man's clothes had been cut off uh, an like, like, like with the Isdal like woman like with the Isdal like woman the exactly Isdal. Uh, and investigators found <coughs> no money wallet or identification on his person mm. once again Mm. Pretty sure, like with the is that woman? Yeah, yeah. She had a load of money, though, didn't she? She had loads of uh, money. Yeah. Was loads that not cash. found in like a suitcase or something? Or yes. Like? Yeah. yeah. By a train station. Mm. Weird. Mm. So, mm. at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, Doctor John Barclay Bennett estimated that time, the time of death was no earlier than two a.m. The attending pathologi- pathologist, mm-hmm. um, John Matthew Dwyer, determined that the body had not been moved after death, mm. so he must have died on the beach. Um, Dwyer also noticed a couple of irregu- a couple of irregularities. The man's pupils seemed small and unusually shaped. The Summerton man also had blood in his stomach, uh, which suggested to Dwyer the presence of some irritant poison. Mm. Dun dun dun. Mm. So, uh, subsequent tests found no poison in the man's blood. However, right. this has led to some investigators to believe that the man either digested. I'm assuming it's called digitalis, um, and we'll go with stro- that. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll go with call that. It that. We'll go with that. Uh, two lethal poisons that don't leave a trace. Mm-hmm. Further attempts to identify the man failed. Neither the FBI nor Scotland Yard had fingerprints on the file, and although coroners determined that the Summerton man had died of heart failure, they couldn't come up with a cause of death. Mm. Police did manage to find the man's abandoned suitcase hmm. at the Adelaide railway station. It contained the exact same unusual orange thread sewn into the Summerton man's pants and some of his uh, clothing labelled T. Keen or T. T. Keen with an E or just T. Keen ending in N. Hmm. Um, this, however, yielded no leads. So they're still kind of fishing in the blue. Hmm. Nothing to really follow at the moment. The most baffling clue, however, came several months later. A renewed search of the Summerton man's possessions revealed a small pocket sewn into the waistband of his trousers. There, investigators found a folded piece of paper that read Tamam Shud, Persian for it's finished or it's ended. Pretty what's, ominous. What's finished yeah. and what's ended? Tamam I ask should. you. Uh, the His words life. were written in a distinctive script and were found to have been torn from a rare New Zealand edition of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam the 12th century work of poetry. The police searched far and wide for a copy of this poem in the same font, but to no avail. Until a man brought the exact copy into the station for them with the last page cut out and everything. But the man who brought in the book claimed that he knew nothing about the poems uh, or the Somerton man. In December of the previous year, he reported, he had taken a drive with his brother-in-law and parked a few hundred yards away from Somerton Beach. When they returned to the car, his brother-in-law noticed a copy of the Rubaiyat of, o- of Omar Khayyam uh, on the floor. Both men had assumed the book belonged to each other. Inside the book, Detective Sergeant Lionel Lean uh, found two unlisted phone numbers and faint lines of code. The first phone number was a dead end, but the second phone number led to a young nurse named Jessica Ellen Joe Thompson, who lived on Somerton Beach. So it's all kind of tying up a little bit. Uh, Thompson was reluctant to speak to the police, though she eventually admitted to having a gifted copy or giving a gifted copy of it to a man named Alfred Boxall. When the Adelaide police pursued this lead, they discovered that Boxall was still alive 
and they had Thompson's copy in his possession. Though Thompson claimed that she didn't know the Somerton man, police reported that she reacted strangely to seeing a plaster cast of his face and almost fainted. Hmm. Uh, Bizarre. With, yeah, exactly. Exactly. With that lead seemingly exhausted, however, police next turned to the faint code in the book. Under a black light, they could make out a strange jumble of letters, uh, which read W, or maybe it was an M, R G O A B A B D W T B I M P A N E T P M L I A B O A I A I Q C L M N O P. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so some sort of code, essentially. <laughs> some sort of code. I won't read the rest <clears throat> of it out. Yeah, some sort but, of code. Um, but even the naval intelligence of australia couldn't crack the code mm. uh, lacking... that was like with the Isdal woman as well she had yeah. like weird codes didn't she on them and mm. nobody like i can't remember i don't think they did ever ca- like break them in the end did they they seem very like almost like connected but not Do you know i think I mean? this is like crazy deep go like balls deep black ops mm. like special special operations mm. stuff this isn't it like mm. with the Isdal woman in the summerton man. exactly exactly so lacking more leads to pursue the police laid the summerton man to rest on june 14th mm. 1949 uh, when the South Australia coroner published the final results of his investigation in 1958, his report concluded with the admission, I am unable to say who the deceased was. I am unable to say how he died or what was the cause of death. It seemed that the mystery would never be solved. So, uh, there is new hope, however, in this case, that the mystery may be solved once and for all, as in recent years, several theories have emerged about the Somerton man and what may have happened to him on that beach. The first popular theory was that the Somerton man killed himself after being rejected by Thompson, uh, the woman who Mm. was obviously shocked. When When she fainted, when she saw him. Yeah, yeah. Some have suggested that Thompson, who died in 2013, actually had a son with the Somerton man uh, due to similarities in their appearance. Rejected from their lives, Mm. perhaps the Somerton man decided to end it all. Seems fairly plausible. Mm. Um, This makes sense for a number of reasons. One, the Somerton man had no defensive wounds. Two, the Tamam note seems to connect to him and Thompson as she gave the book out as a gift. Mm. Uh, The more provocative theory, however, is that the Somerton man was a spy that knew too much. Uh, His death struck many investigators as highly unusual especially if he was indeed killed by uh, deadly poisons that disappear. Supporting this theory is the fact that no one came to claim the body, despite publicity around the case being huge, Mm. Uh, plus the indecipherable code and confounding nature of the meaning of Tamam Shud, uh, seems like something out of a spy novel. Yeah, let's face it, right? If like if one of us three like just died randomly now, mm. for a start, not the labels of all of our clothes wouldn't be cut out. Mm. We wouldn't randomly have like random lines of like Persian poetry, mm. which seemed really cryptic and ominous in our pocket, written down along with like loads of weird code. And we'd all have like somebody would come forward and to claim yeah. our body. Mm. You know what I mean? Like family or members of the fact that like Scotland Yard, the FBI and like the Australian like um, police didn't have any records of mm. him. Like even like he was like completely off grid. Exactly. The same as with the exactly. Isdal woman. Like it just seems really weird. It's so mental. And the fact that he had be... blood in his stomach. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's, so, it's so mental <clears throat> to be completely off the grid when no one can identify you after you've died. Yeah. Mm. Like I don't think he was disfigured or anything. No, no, he wasn't. No. They literally just couldn't figure out who he was. One thing I thought was like really weird. Sorry, just like before you go on, I remember yeah, no hearing um, going on about like the strange physical features, like along with his like mangled toes and his like overly mm. developed calf muscles. Was I remember also um, hearing this is probably just some weird like physical like slight physical dis- like deformity, not really a deformity mm. that he was born with. Like abnormality is probably a better word. Was you know like un- at the front of t- um, your teeth. We all have four incisors, yep. both bottom and top, and then we have our canines, then after that are our molars. Mm-hmm. The, years, um, the Somerton man only had two incisors, and mm. then on, the, on the, either side of that, it went straight to canines, and apparently it gave him almost like the appearance of almost like he was like a vampire. Whoa! I just thought that was like a weird, cool fact. Yeah. It was obviously just like you know, you know how like um, you like you've got like a little crink in your ear, haven't you? Mm. Just like a mm. slight, you know, it's not like you wouldn't mm. even ever notice it. It's like a mm. slight, yeah, just weird though. Yeah, it's just almost like a slight burst also, abnormality. Do you know like, that bit of your ear there? Yeah. Like, like is that like there, glued? That so on this side, it's just it's just the 
it's just like gl- yeah, like yeah, glued like to you my think it was glued. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's just like stuck to my ear. So yeah. Weird. So it's like he obviously was just born with like some slight normality, but apparently, as a result, it gave him almost like the appearance that he was almost like a bit of a vampire. And apparently, he had like strangely pointy ears as well. Mm. So he would have been like quite a uni- interesting a looking vampire. character. He had like yeah, definitely. weirdly. That's hench- why he had blood in his stomach. See if you can get any photos <laughs> up of him, man. Apparently, he had like weird. Yeah, like oh yeah, yeah like oh, mang- yeah. mangled Somewhere. mangled toes, weirdly hench calves. Um, pointy ears and then like had teeth like a vampire mm. like quite an interesting and then like all this weird yeah, cryptic, yeah, yeah. like stuff I'll finish mm. off the story yeah, so, so, sorry man uh, weirder clues have been found since the oh, Somerton yeah. man was laid to rest retired Australian uh, have you got him up now yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. retired Australian policeman Ga- Gary Feltus who's got a, quite a cool name mm. um, who wrote the only book yet published on the case discovered a witness in 1950 who said that they should have seen or said that they had seen one man carrying another on his shoulder on the night of November 30th, 1948. Mm. Could that have been one drunk friend helping another, maybe? Or Mm. even the Somerton man's killer finishing the job? The investigation has also since been picked up by the Thompson's own daughters. Uh, They suggest that they could have perhaps been related to the Somerton man Mm. and that he and their mother could have been involved in a Soviet spy ring. <gasps> what year was it that he died? 1948. Yeah, so I, that's believable, because think, 48, that's three years after the Second World War ended, mm. and then in the aftermath of the Second World War, basically, like, tensions between the Soviet Union and, um, like, the West started forming, specifically between, like, America and, mm. and Russia. So, I mean, it's plausible. So, the world may get some answers soon, however. In May 2021, the body of the Somerton man was exhumed and will be tested for DNA. Interesting. Uh, only time will tell whether those results will finally close the Tamam Should case for good, but until then, we can only speculate. So, um, what do you guys think happened? I think that, yeah, I think that he was like some sort of spy, mm. some sort of like I deep agent. Spy. I just think, you know, as I said, it's like with the Isdal woman, like, you know... The fact that he was completely off grid, no nobody from like the Western world had any like knowledge of his fingerprints. No family came forward. The mm. blood in his stomach indicates to me that he probably his death was probably th- by swallowing something, which then mm. probably like either caused internal bleeding or like ruptured his intestines, and that's what's caused internal bleeding. Um, yeah, I said the fact that his tags mm. were cut out, the weird cryptic messages, the codes. Mm. As I said, like who who has all that? Yeah, mm. uh, you know what I mean. Like it's yeah, weird, yeah, yeah. And, and just the thing blows my mind as well. Is just like being totally like off grid anywhere yeah. in the Western yeah. world. Yeah, 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 like, yeah because yeah. everyone has like the, n- yeah. the national insurance number. You know, you've got all these things that tie you to you to you like yeah. mm. straight away from the moment you're born. And to get rid of all of that yeah. is like a really. And don't get me wrong, mm. there, there are some people obviously that unfortunately might literally have no family, which might seem strange. Yeah, like my to dad's a lot friend of recently. Yeah. he just he just passed away. Yeah, and literally they weren't even allowed to go to the funeral because it was it was going to be a state one like mm. no one mm. no one was there to pay for the funeral or anything yeah. so he just goes over to the state to do it so none of the people that knew him around the flat could even like go to it because yeah. of the funeral mm. and stuff but that was a weird one just no family and stuff but it's yeah. just, Literally, Very like rare, isn't it? Yeah, but I was gonna say, like, even if you even say if you don't have any brothers and sisters, like nephews, nieces, children, parents, whatever, mm. like cousins, like they'll probably the chance are like, what, or for a start, like, what do you do for work? Surely yeah, there's some people yeah, that know, yeah, or like, exactly, or like some, exactly, or some yeah. friends, or like an ex girlfriend, or something, mm. like just somebody have, that'll go. Must have had, um, oh yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, you know must mean? have had money to like go and get these suits. Oh yeah, and yeah. all this yeah. stuff. Like it, it's not like he was yeah, roaming like about a as a wild man. You said he had like polished, yeah, yeah. polished leather shoes yeah, exactly. on, and all that. Like, like well presented and everything. Mm. Yeah, uh, got all these cigarettes. Like he, it seems that he's been to America mm. with like that mm. comb and everything that he yeah, might have yeah, got from America. Yeah. Well traveled, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd th- you'd think that to get there, you'd need the money. Yeah, to have like a job. Yeah, and to have a job, people must be able to identify you. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I reckon stuff. some sort of spy. Yeah. But why he was killed? That's a bit like with the Ustal woman. It's like why why were they killed? That's the most mm. important, like, interesting thing. Why were they where they were, and why were they? Why did they die? I feel like if you were gonna commit suicide as well, you wouldn't do it with like some random, like untraceable poison. No. Mm. Like no. I feel like there's easier ways to do it than going out of your way to find like this one in particular poison that they can't trace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's almost like yeah. It's almost like. Uh, it wasn't traceable in the system. It's like the the hair blood in his stomach, mm. so, which almost like indicated that something he ingested like messed him up mm. savagely. Mm. But the fact that there was just no, you know, what I mean, it wasn't like they detected cyanide. No, or no, no, yeah. exactly, mental, exactly. 
But yeah, mm. that was the story of the Summerton Man. That was the story of the Summerton Man. First Mystery Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Mystery Mondays. Mystery Mondays. Mystery Mondays. Mystery Mondays. We have brought you Mystery Mondays. Mystery Mondays. Mystery Mondays. Mystery Mondays. Join us next week for more Mystery Mondays. 